All right, so we're here at Camera Camp again. We have literally every Sony lens at our disposal that we can borrow. So we thought it'd be a great idea to compare them, not in a technical sense, but use it more as a way to demonstrate what focal lengths do, how they change your image, and sort of put this whole myth of lens compression to test. We ran into this guy. Excuse me, is Eric uh, true? We're filming a video over here, guys. Be professional, okay? I'm sorry. See, we're trying to film a video. I'm just kidding. You. What are you oh, filming? No, it's okay. this, is, this, is, this is literally your guys' event. Now that we've quieted down these patrons here, <laughs> we've got focal lengths that range from 12 millimeters all the way to 600. And we're gonna do some tests on how the different focal lengths change uh, how the image appears. Gerald okay. Undone. He, I think, is a perfect companion for this video since he does a lot of very uh, very technically oriented videos. I think you'd be the perfect dude to, to sort of compliment I think here. I am the perfect dude. Yeah. Wait, what are we talking about? Perfect dude, full stop. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. Everyone's sort of seen that Alfred Hitchcock style dolly zoom. dolly zoom, yeah. It really demonstrates how as you're pulling him back and zooming in, the background gets bigger. People call that lens compression. And I think that may be a little bit of a misnomer. Yeah, it's or, like it's like perspective distortion or whatever, because obviously perspective changes. When you get close, you know, your nose comes out and everything, yeah. right? That's the lens is doing that, but the background is just a field of view. That's all that's really right. Changing. All the lens is doing is allowing you to maintain a similar framing. The fact that you're moving closer or further away or closer to your subject that's actually changing the appearance of your subject with respect to the background. We were hanging out in the lodge, and I walked backwards and forwards towards you, and your face got bigger and smaller with respect to the background with your eyes, and you can do that in your own living room and demonstrate that, but you can't zoom in with your eyes, and that's where I think people get confused. You can't zoom with your eyes? I can't, no. Needs the upgrades. I can see widescreen though. We are set up almost. We're waiting for our subjects to get set up. Wish I had a coffee. Well, I, you can have the rest of my old coffee. It's been sitting know. there for a while. There's probably bugs in it. Do you like bugs? A little protein. I was actually Pumba in my high. Becky and Donna did it from the channel. Donna did it are going to be our subjects here. I think they're setting up their own camera. Since Becky's probably gonna be editing this, they're gonna be cutting in comments from their peanut gallery. I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna assume our disrespectful towards <laughs> the science guys right. over here, yeah. So I had to eat some bugs doing research. Yeah, you know? dabbling in grubs is, you know, it's a nice treat every now and then. We're gonna test out the different focal lengths and we're gonna crop it in and see, on all these images, we're gonna see how the, f the depth of field changes as well. Or Perfect. how much it looks the same. Yeah. So do you have predictions on this? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Barring any small little tertiary things that we're not figuring out, but in a perfect sort of vacuum. The... I like how you have to qualify that. That is something I would totally do. Yeah. You got to qualify the limitations of your experiment. I don't understand anything either of them say most of the time. Same. Okay. Well, because we don't know. I mean, we're using lenses. We're, like, we're still using hardware that's made by people, right? So yeah. if we keep the same distance, but we just zoom in, yep. then we will see a difference. But if we changed our distance with our focal length at the same time, uh, then our depth of field will remain the same, but longer lenses will make things look bigger, even if their out of focus qualities are the same. Something might look like a small blurry ball, and then with a longer lens, it might look like a big blurry ball, which is why people like it for portraits, right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean that the blurriness amount is any different. It's just right. further away. Right. We're gonna choose f6.3 because this 600 millimeter behemoth at 600 millimeters is f6.3. So we're trying to keep all the f-stops the same Perfect. across the, or the aperture the same across all lenses just to make this as controlled as possible. First lens we're trying out, the Sony 200 to 600. Uh, this is a long lens, man. Yeah. Like this is very, yeah. very zoomed in. He's so in. tight. Yeah, he is so tight. So we're at 600 millimeters now and we're about 165 feet away, yeah. we were saying. So you can't even see the background right now. It's just, just a blur of yeah. blue. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna zoom out incrementally. So we're gonna go to 500 millimeters. Eh, it's a little bit looser of a shot. Just excuse my framing, this is not very ideally framed here. Moving out to 400 millimeters. So that's 400 there. 300 millimeters, let it focus. And now there's more of a semblance. You can kind of see now um, the background's a bit more established. And so would you say you'd be able to see the background better there? Like now you can actually make out trees and sort of patchy rocks. Yeah, I think before, and also even when you're looking at it, like it was so tight before that I don't think you even established that there is a back background in your head. You right. know what I mean? You're not even looking at it. We're now, you're bringing it in. You can yeah. see some things through details. And now we're at 200 millimeters. Really, really blurry details, but they're there. The reason why that happens, obviously, you guys know that longer lenses make, you know, blurrier backgrounds. But the main idea here is that when you combine the focal length with the size of your aperture, the entrance pupil, which is how the aperture looks from the, the entrance of the lens from the front of it, it gets bigger. So it's getting bigger at the front. And what depth of field basically is, is kind of like how objects are perceived, like how 
big the circles of, this sounds too fan, too technical, but circles of confusion, right? What? 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 Can you spell that? I think you probably lost half of our audience when you start talking about circles of confusion. The audience, I appreciate the it. The audience is in a circle of confusion. They're, right <laughs> they're from another planet or yeah. they're like they're robots. species. They're robots. Yeah. That makes way more sense. Basically, we're making this bigger in the front by either making the lens longer or making the aperture bigger. And that big circle makes things that are out of focus, blurrier and bigger yeah. out of focus so you, that way. And I also think about it too, like if you look at the lens diagram, you picture the rays coming in. Yeah. If you have a smaller aperture, you're letting only the rays that are parallel with your axis, your camera coming in. But if you open the aperture up, you're now letting light coming in on weird obliquities that are bl very blurry. They're so yeah. nerdy, man. And when rays are close together, they seem more acceptably in focus. focus. Exactly. exactly. Hence circles of confusion. You got it. There you go. These guys are idiots. Yeah, They're the smartest idiots. idiots that I've ever met. In a nutshell, if you didn't follow any of that, longer focal lengths means shallower depth of field or more blurriness. So 200 millimeters, pick a spot where there's no trees on the mountain and watch that. And I'm gonna slowly zoom in and it's gonna get blurrier as we change the focal length. So right now the, it's just, get, it, so it goes from more well-defined, now it's more just more blurry. So it got bigger, yes, because it's more zoomed in, but it also got blurrier because the depth of field changes. Back at 200 millimeters here, this is with the 70 to 200. We're gonna go now to 100 millimeters. That's what 100 millimeters looks like. And then we're gonna zoom out to 70 millimeters. So we're at 70 millimeters now on the 24 to 70. Uh, again, we're gonna compare 70 millimeters on this lens compared to the 7200. There might be a slight difference in the overall framing and distance, but that's because the image plane, which is on the camera, is actually shifting because on the larger lenses we're mounting by the lens support and then now we're mounting on the camera. So obviously our camera's moving by a little bit, but at this distance, I don't know how significant it's gonna be in the final image. I think there's probably gonna be more change, more variability in me trying to manually frame <laughs> probably, it up. Probably, yeah, yeah. you okay. won't even see it probably. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now 50 millimeters. We're so much further away than we were yeah, 600. You can see so much more. <laughs> 35 millimeters. 24 millimeters, damn. 24 millimeters on the 12 to 24. So this is like Sony's ultra wide zoom. Yeah. This is a really fun lens. Have you had a chance to use this? A little bit, not much. I don't do a lot of really wide stuff, okay. so, but it's fun. Yeah, Becky and I actually, when we started shooting photos as, as a tangent, we used to shoot all ultra wide. So I had a 12 millimeter lens on my 5D Mark II that we were shooting a lot of photos with and doing some video work with. So I really think it's a fun perspective, especially with a rectilinear lens. In this example here, 24 millimeters on this, comparing it to that, A, B, they probably look similar. And now we're gonna zoom out to 16 millimeters. And <laughs> 16 looks really wide. This is actually a very pleasing shot, I think. Like, it, it looks very nice. Yeah, you just don't know what your subject is anymore. <laughs> At some point between 24 and 70 millimeters, your subject becomes the landscape, not those two putzes over there. We need to do we the gimbal just, training. We could do like a full workout that was based yeah. off lifting cameras and gimbals. Or we could do a full training montage where we get ripped by just like I using like camera gear. <laughs> and finally, 12 millimeters. Like, this is an ultra wide lens. Uh, again, really fun lens. The size of the background with respect to what? <laughs> Careful, Jared, you're almost falling over. <laughs> Did I call you Jared? Jared, you're I think I just said Jared. <laughs> We're going to now do this little exercise. We're gonna digitally zoom in on all these photos and demonstrate that even if you're at 12 millimeters versus 600 millimeters, the background in relation to the subject has, still has the same size to it. And I guess this is kind of a good point to illustrate that that's effectively what a crop body is doing. Crop that's body. why people think the crop bodies have uh, a deeper depth of field because they're keeping the same distance of the subject to the camera, but they're getting a different, like a, a narrower field of view, right. which will give them a d deeper depth of field. We're on, obviously on a larger sensor, we can use different focal lengths that wouldn't be wide enough before. So in this one, when you punch in, I think that you'll get the same details, lower resolution will get the same details, but there will be a depth of field difference. If we would have walked forward with the camera as we zoomed out, like you said, the vertigo effect or the dolly zoom or whatever, then we would have maintained the same depth of field. I'm pretty confident we'll see that there's no real difference in the position of the items behind. And, and that's, that's a good point to illustrate because it's not the, the actual sensor size that, that changes these characteristics. It's the fact that you have to move your position to accommodate the field of view you get with a cropped sensor. Or change your lens. Or change your lens, yeah. yeah. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go back to the 600, we're gonna shoot that again, and then we're gonna step the tripod in, changing our focal plane. That field should stay the same as we get closer to our subject. However, what will change <laughs> is the uh, perceived size of the background with respect to our subjects. 
And then we'll have the fallibility of a human probably. We're not lining it up the same or whatever. No, but, but it'll we'll be, try. yeah, <laughs> we'll have to somehow create landmarks. Okay, all right, let's do it. <laughs> That's my knees. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so for sake of time, we're not gonna do 600, 500, 400. We're just gonna go 600, 400, 200, maybe 50, 24, 12, something like that. And the, the variation here is gonna be uh, in my framing. I'm gonna try to keep everything similarly framed, but there's gonna be variability. That's probably gonna be the ultimate downfall of this experiment, but just just, just bear with us, okay? Don't be, don't be too critical. We're at camera camp, this is like vacation, okay? We've got a pretty a pretty similar look. I think the framing's pretty pretty similar. The background is just as imperceptible as previous. That will eventually change as, we, as it gets smaller with the much shorter focal length. But yeah, 400 millimeters, this looks pretty much, it looks pretty similar to the 600. So now we are at 200 millimeters, and you can really start seeing the background come into frame here. You can see now there's a ridge line behind their heads. You're like, oh, that's a mountain. It's just not a big blue blob. You can still see the bush behind Dunna a little bit, but uh, the, the background is still equally out of focus. It's just that it's push seems pushed back more. Do we get paid for this? Yeah. This is 100 millimeters. And again, you can see more of the ridge line there. It looks further away. The thing that we discounted here is that the tripod, it's kind of below the horizon a little bit with, with respect to what we're, our subjects are. We're aiming up at our subjects. So the background is actually falling away and we're actually going to get blue, more blue sky. So it's sort of not a perfect experiment again, but hopefully it illustrates the point. Okay, on to 70 millimeters. 70 millimeters now. And again, same effects we've seen before. On to 50, then 24. This camera, there are cameras in the way. Stupid camera, let's get rid of that. Excuse me. Thank you, Gerald. Just how, how crazy this is. <laughs> We're at 50 millimeters now. Again, same field of view. Let's go to 24. And move forward, move forward, move forward. 24 millimeters. Now we can actually make out a background. We can, for the first time, see grass behind them. Oh, we can good. see grass grass that grass tree that's, that's far away. Oh, that tree that used to be next to, next to Dunna on the side is now in the middle of them. So it's been just decompressed back, if you will. Okay, 16 millimeters, here we are. Seems to be an addition to the frame. Gerald, get out of the frame, man. 16 millimeters, and then finally, 12 millimeters, the widest of them all. But now we can see there's a background, there's that tree, and the background has just gone, really gotten a lot smaller compared to our subject. Or conversely, our subjects look like they got a lot bigger. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna show you the final sort of uh, rapid fire sequence. Uh, 600 all the way down to 12. You know there's sound effects on Epidemic Sound. Mm. But there's not ASMR. So there you have it. That was our little demonstration. We got to play with some really fun lenses. All up to 600 millimeters, that thing was crazy. The simplest way of saying it would be that as your focal length gets longer or your, your lenses get bigger, that you're going to get a shallower look. You know, you're gonna get bigger out of focus areas. But when, if you're gonna crop in and make an equal image, I think we'll see that the amount of details that are in the shot are gonna stay the same and in the same position. Right. But then if you physically get closer, which will also change your depth of field. Yeah. Then you're actually changing more more of what you're thinking of the framing in your head when you when you picture you know a photo getting wider or narrower. Yeah. The act of getting closer to your subject that changes the size of the background elements, not necessarily the focal length. But they can cancel each other out if you zoom out while moving forward or whatever. Then then like we've talked about, you just get that illusion in the background going. Right. You zoom out when you're moving forward, it'll keep the field of view the same, but your background subjects your background objects will get smaller with relation to your, your main subject. And the face will get more distorted. Exactly. So if you're looking to optimize depth of field and you want the shallowest depth of field because you think it looks the most cinematic, you want to optimize your aperture. You yep. want to make it the widest as possible, open that diaphragm up. You want to get as close to your subject as possible so that your focal plane is very close to the lens. You also want to use the longest focal length that you have. So open up, use long, get close. There you go. So long focal length, wide aperture, and get as close to the subject as possible. I hope you guys enjoyed this technical video of these guys talking about things and us harassing them. Subscribe to Gerald and subscribe to Donna. And if you haven't already subscribed to us, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye. You're going in the water. Too many calls to happen. <laughs> Should've just been subscribed to me. Okay. <laughs> one thing. We're going to film a video out there. You can see Becky back there. Yeah. Uh, but we're also going to be filming some for what's going into the video about the compression. It's going to be a little bit convoluted, but I think we can we can put it together in the edit. This sounds like a nightmare for Becky to have to inter un unintertwine all of this footage and ma make an actual concise edit. Turd is the best turd. word. I feel like turd is a Becky word. Yeah, strut your stuff, Donna. Yeah, Walk towards me, baby.
Oh. How's that autofocus tracking? It looks good. It looks pretty good, yeah. Came here to enjoy peace and quiet by the lake. If you're gonna go out there, I can carry this over. I'm gonna take off right now. Finally, they're gone. She's so loud. <laughs> Shake it, Donna. I, I can hear the stressful low battery indicator. <laughs> I've, I've had like a Pavlovian response to that, like instant ping of anxiety. They, they too almost lost the drone over the water. That would have been drone casualty number three of the weekend. <laughs> hey! Hey, that's inappropriate. You cannot put that on our YouTube channel. Family friendly content here, though. Thank you, Gerald. I don't want to get demonetized, okay? This is not finding your face. Is it on manual focus? No. Is it dark? No. Are you a noob? Did you turn Maybe. on the, did you turn on the face box?